What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji and today I want to talk to you guys about Colton Miller because last year a lot of people were talking about why the Raiders would draft such a player that should have won in the third or fourth round. Right? That's a common thing that I read especially last year. This year obviously people are backing off of it but to be honest with you guys I was one of the only persons that was defending Miller. His first three weeks before he got hurt, he allowed zero sacks and zero quarterback hits. It was only until after he got hurt that he started allowing a lot of sacks, which was that week four game against the Cleveland Browns. Well, this year he's been healthy and this year he's honestly been one of the best offensive tackles. So what I want to do today is discuss with you guys what it is that makes him so good. Last year, when I watched this film, I felt that he was a very solid run blocker. Last year, he did not need to improve his run blocking that much. He just needed to get a little bit stronger. He was always smart. He had great flexibility. So that's kind of what I want to focus in on this video. And I want to start with this first play right here. I want to show you guys what makes Miller a good left tackle. As an offensive tackle, the first thing you're taught is you have to get low and get your helmet on the correct side. Your helmet should always be on the side in which the running back is going to run or the hole that you're trying to create. In this instance, Colton Miller does a great job by getting his helmet on the left side of number 93. The second thing Miller does very good in this play is he drives number 93, and that's just the added bonus. Look from where Miller first made contact to where number 93 ends up, and you kind of see what Miller does well in this play. He does a great job sealing this defensive tackle for the touchdown. Here's another play that you're going to see Colton Miller block the linebacker, and he does a really nice job sealing the linebacker off. Now, this is an important concept when it comes to blocking. If you're able to get your butt towards the hole, that's going to open things up. You're going to see Miller right here go to the next level to take on number 56, and he does a great job sealing him off. One of the things you're going to learn as an offensive lineman is you have to seal, you have to get your helmet on the correct side, and you have to get low. And he does all three of those things in this play. You see he gets his helmet on the correct side. You see that he also is low. He has control of the chest, and he's put his butt towards the running back. There's an open hole right here for the running back to get through. Now, this play only picked up five yards. I know I'm saying only five yards, like it's not that many yards. Um, but that's because the defense had that extra guy in the box, right? Number 22 was that extra defender. But Miller does a great job, and you'll see it from the all 22 as well. Uh, Colton's lined up again at left tackle. He does a great job getting up to that second level and sealing the backer off. And it looks much different in full speed versus a uh, slow motion. You kind of see how quick you have to be in order to make that block, right? Uh, that is one of the reasons why the Raiders brought in Miller. He has that speed. He has the flexibility. He can get to the next level. There's so much he's going to be able to do for the Raiders this year as the next couple of weeks uh, go on. All right, guys, moving on to the next play, I want to discuss Colton Miller's awareness, IQ, and I guess this is kind of all of the offense linemen and the blockers in general. I'll, I'll let you guys watch the play, and then we'll, we'll kind of back up, and, and I'll show to you guys some of the things that I noticed, some of the small things that I think are super important. Now, this is a fourth down play, right? And we pick up 18 yards, which is great. But just backing up here, uh, the first thing to note is Derek Carr does a great job. He understands that this play is going to be a, a fake to the running back, and it's going to be a toss to number 28 to the left side of the screen. But Derek Carr understands that the strong side is the left side, and this play doesn't work unless Waller lines up on the right side because as you guys are going to see uh, once that shift happens number 41 is also going to go towards the right of the screen the linebacker shift just a little bit uh, last but not least the defensive end right here if you guys missed it let me back up uh, watch this defensive end he's going to shift from playing the tight end to just outside of Colton Miller now understanding every single player does not have a microphone in their ear they're not told who to block they're not told where to go right they just have a general concept of how this play should work and it's their job to execute now this is a trick play right of course they're gonna fake it to the fullback i'll play it so you guys can kind of see it it's a fake to the fullback but really it's gonna be a toss to josh jacobs to the left this play works because number 97 is going to follow Colton Miller's block and he's going to play this really close to Colton Miller. Now, this is a little bit of coaching. This is a little bit uh, of the offensive lineman doing what they know to do. 
and this is why this play works this defense is going to overplay whatever they think is coming towards them and then of course foster moreau has a fantastic block out here it's not a hold he just does a great job to block number 29 i think that's xavier rhodes uh, but to colton miller's um, job he understands not to block the furthest guy to the outside he understands that that guy can't be blocked now prior to the waller actually going in motion colton miller's job at this point right now is to block number 97 if Carr does not shift over waller foster moreau and colton miller will have to block number 97 so this is definitely a block uh, for miller right um, or he might have to come out and pick this linebacker up right we don't really know exactly how this play would work but colton miller does know what he has to do depending on the situation Carr obviously understands that he's going to make a shift at this point he's probably telling them hey let's just run the play that we've called the blocking's good watch miller block down again it's huge if miller doesn't block down number 97 is not going to stay close to miller right miller blocks down which is great uh you get the fake pull by richie incognito to make the linebackers and everybody go towards the right great play design great blocking by the offensive lineman great blocking by the uh, tight end again this just kind of shows you where the unit is together right they understand what they need to do and that's one of the biggest things that an offensive line has to uh, be able to perform well they have to work together well right as a cohesive unit super super important one of the biggest difference when it comes to colton miller this year compared to last year is his weight and his strength and his overall build right last year coming in he was about 305 pounds think about that 305 pounds at 6 8 is crazy right i mean i know some of us out there are 5 10 240 pounds this guy 6 8 300 pounds which means he was super skinny last year this year is much different this year he weighed about 335 pounds and you're gonna see it in this block with that added weight and added strength it does watch 74 and watch what he does not only does he have a fantastic double team block but with richie incognito but watch what he does keep an hand keep an eye on his left hand as he doubles look at his left hand right there and look at how he's able to move that linebacker and stay on his double team now that's a freaking great play if you ask me right there that's a gain about five yards but the block is super impressive you know i didn't watch this game uh, because the y'all 22 for some reason wasn't available it just became available and as i was breaking down colton miller and just watching this film this play stuck out to me right away because that's a great way to move someone to move a linebacker with your left arm one arm only while you're already engaged in double teaming with richie incognito on a 330 pound defensive tackle that shows you that strength the added 20 25 30 pounds has really benefited colton miller and you can see that perfectly on this play the biggest improvement colton miller had to make before he even came into the nfl was his pass blocking and his technique now i don't think his technique's that big of an issue personally i think uh, technique does not have to be one way i think that's a flaw that some people do think that all technique should look like x y and z right i think that was kind of the knock on trent brown is his technique's not great he's kind of big he's kind of slow uh, and again that was the same knock with orlando brown jr but they're, they're they're perfectly fine players colton miller one of his biggest flaws was his technique he kind of leans a little bit uh, he's not great because he starts leaning uh, but pass blocking was his biggest flaw i think it still is his his least best attribute right i, I would say um, but he does a pretty nice job here right he, he does a great job getting out there he sees it he has his helmet turned he knows that hey this guy could come he does a good job getting his right arm up and he's not leaning right which is fantastic he doesn't lean too much He's doing a good job. He sticks with his block and he's really improved and he's really shown me that uh, he's working on his craft. You know, Tom Cable really wanted Colton Miller for a reason and Colton Miller showing why the Raiders were right with selecting him and not a player like Derwin James, like many people wanted or, or the next best offensive lineman like Isaiah Wynn or some of these other tackles that came out. Colton Miller has shown up and he's showing why the Raiders took him with the pick that they took him and, and why they had so much confidence in him. The guy's going to be a very solid tackle to come. I just hope that he stays healthy, right? That's one thing that can definitely ruin players' careers.
Personally, injury is not a big concern when it comes to Miller. I think he's very flexible. I think he has uh, he has good genetics. Obviously, he's you know six eight, six nine. He's super tall. Uh, but when it came to a player like Mike McGlinchey, uh, I think they're they're different players, right? One's a little bit stiffer. One's more flexible. And Miller's definitely more flexible. And I, I think it definitely helps him to be able to be coached by someone like Tom Cable, right? Cable is known to take players from one side and shift them to the other, one position and shift them to the next. And he's done a good job with Miller. I mean, Miller does a great job blocking uh, one of the two Smiths. I don't know which one that is, but uh, he does a really good job and he gives Carr time. And uh, you guys can see it from the uh, backside angle. You know, Miller's definitely improved his game. He does a good job blocking up. The one thing that I see Miller struggling with still is speed. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not speed players. The thing I see him struggling with is power players, right? He gave up a sack. He gave up a hit uh, against the Vikings. He lost a little bit against their defensive ends, right? They have some of the, they play a, a base 4-3, a true 4-3. Um, in this play, he does a great job with speed, right? So you can see that he does not struggle with speed at all. All right, here's another play against the Kansas City Chiefs. One of the biggest improvements I see Miller make is he leans a little bit. Again, it's not as bad as it once was because he waits to make contact, right? Uh, he gets wider with his, his jump step, as you're going to see here, and he gets his hands on number 55. I think that's Frank Clark. He does a good job with that, right? That's what we need. That's what we need from our offensive tackle. Uh, so you're going to see the jump cut here. He does a good job and he gets his hands on 55. And once he gets his hands on him, he does a good job locking up and just sticking to that. So again, this is one of those improvements that I needed him to make. And it's an improvement that he has made. You know, coming into the season, a lot of people wanted Tom Cable fired. People were calling for Gruden's head, saying he doesn't know what he's doing. They should have taken Derwin James, you know, or, or a lot of other stuff, right? There was a lot of negativity. One thing I've learned is to trust Sean Gruden. He knows what he's doing, and we're kind of seeing that with the Mac trade as well. Anybody that watches my videos knows that, one, I was not for firing Tom Cable. I actually liked him. Uh, I know uh, there was another uh, YouTuber who kind of went against uh, Tom Cable. He stirred up some uh, some statistics, and he posted it to his Twitter. And I kind of went against that. I don't think he's as bad as the numbers suggest. I think he's a good coach. I don't think John Gruden would have hired him if that was not the case. You know, John Gruden's done a great job with his draft picks. I don't know all of them have panned out, but some of them have. And we're kind of still going to see what happens the next year or two with some of the other players that him and Mike Mayock have selected. Um, you know, the, the Cleo Mack, if you guys... Uh, watch my channel you guys know i was on board with that trade i think saving 25 million dollars a year and getting four or five picks makes a lot of sense right if we can take uh colton miller and and obviously his left tackle is a little bit different in my opinion but if you can take a player like josh jacobs and get four or five really good years out of him and then someone offers us two first round picks for him I'd have no issue trading him. If someone wants Cleveland Farrell in four years after he becomes an all pro caliber player and they're willing to give us two first round picks, I'd have no problem with it. You know, it's a salary cap league. At the end of the day, the quarterback wins you a Super Bowl with a good offensive line, a good defensive line, um, and a good secondary, right? That's what wins, but it starts with your quarterback and offensive line. We see a player like Matthew Stafford throw for over 400 yards against the Raiders, but he still loses. Why? Because the West Coast run the ball, control the clock type team will always beat you. The Baltimore Ravens just beat the New England Patriots. Why? Because they run the football. They control the clock, right? I think uh, the Patriots only have the ball for 20 minutes out of the 60-minute game, which is crazy to think about, right? Uh, overall, I'm really impressed with Colton. I want to know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.